cool. Hey makers, Devin here again, and in case you haven't noticed, we're kind of living in futuristic times. We're hearing a lot these days about self-driving cars and hoverboards and gene editing and all kinds of crazy futuristic stuff, and it's super cool. Unfortunately, a lot of that stuff is not really accessible to us yet, but today I'm going to try to get a little futuristic with virtual reality. So as you probably know, there's some really good virtual reality headsets coming out these days. There's still a couple hundred bucks, so if you're like me and you're not ready to spend that money, you need an alternative. And since I've got a 3D printer, how crazy would it be to 3D print a virtual reality headset? I mean, really. Ten years ago, I would not believe myself if I said I was going to be doing that. And yet, here we are. It's happening. Today. Virtual reality. 3D printed. Future. <laughs> Alright, I'll be honest. I'm not making an Oculus Rift or an HTC Vive yet. But I mean, this is make anything, so maybe down the line. So you might be aware of Google Cardboard, which is a super cheap virtual reality viewing device. And maybe, like me, you even got an even cheaper version in the mail. So this is just like an advertising virtual reality gimmick thing. And you know, the way this works is it's got some Velcro. You put your phone in and you're in the virtual world. So for a free virtual reality, this is pretty cool. But I just wanted to step it up like a notch or two. So what we're going to do today is take apart this super cheap virtual reality viewer and make a slightly nicer version customized to fit my phone. So the first thing I'll do is use my calipers to get measurements off of the original viewer. So the people who made this figured out the distance of the lenses from the phone and all that. So I might as well use their measurements and save myself some work. So I take out these lenses, which is pretty much the only part I need to reuse. And then I go into SolidWorks and start modeling out my phone. So I use the calipers again to measure the screen and the speakers. And then by playing around with a magnet, I figured out that the magnetometer on my phone is right here in the back where this little circle is. And we use that magnetometer to create a trigger that can interact with the VR application. So from there I kind of just started improvising, building around the model of my phone and figuring things out that way. I decided to use a rubber seal here where the phone contacts the viewer to prevent it from scratching and to block out any light. And you can see it overlaps a little here. That's because it used to be thinner, but after the first round of printing I figured out uh, I needed a little more space between the phone screen and the lenses. And this is the trigger that's going to interact with the back of my phone, so I printed out this button and built in a magnet, which I kind of just squeezed in after I printed it. And then the rubber bands that hold the phone in are also going to hold this trigger down. So you can see on the back I have some more flexible filament, just so things don't slide around as much. And then by just using a rubber band, I can create a really smooth and nice working trigger. I wanted the lenses to just pop into place, so I created these circular notches. Since they're tabs and not a full circle, they flex just enough to hold the lenses in place. You can see I have two parts here for this main body, and the reason I did that was so that I could print with minimal supports. So as you can see, this part has very few overhangs, just a little bit right at the beginning, but for the most part, it prints without supports. So I can take it off with my trusty butter knife and clean it up a bit. And this is the part I printed using flexible filament, so that actually cleans up a little nicer using scissors. I stick that on the rim, which was kind of difficult, but it worked really well. And then I just use super glue to hold the two parts of the body together. So to actually use this thing, I open up my VR application hold my phone to the viewer, and put on the rubber bands. So the rubber bands both hold the phone to the viewer, and they also hold the trigger to the phone.
And that's about all there was to it. Now I've got a pretty sweet VR device. Well, I've got to say, I am so stoked on how this came out. I mean, does this thing look crazy or what? I love it. I love it. And you know, all the features I put in there work pretty well. So I've got those sound tunnels that channel the stereo speakers on my 6P right to my ears. And while this doesn't actually beat headphones in terms of sound quality, it's much better than this old cheap cardboard thing, you know? I've got this magnetic trigger here, which is pretty cool. It lets you take pictures and select things which in, within VR. You know, these large side panels really block out any light from this side. And because I use NinjaFlex to create this rubber barrier between the phone and the viewer, there's no light leaking in there either. And so it's super dark and super immersive. Maybe the next time around I would make this a little easier to remove the phone, because you gotta take off all the rubber bands to take the phone out and on again. But once you're in there, this is a super cool experience. The trigger works great, the focus is perfect. I put some holes here through the side so one day I can put a strap through it and make it hands-free, which would be cool. It's cool, right? It's cool, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. What can I say? It's cool. It's virtual reality, 3D printed virtual reality. 3D printed virtual reality. Virtual reality, 3D printed. What year is this? 2016. What are we doing? 3D printing virtual reality headsets. What's going on? Oh my gosh, this is the future. Oh my gosh. I'll see you guys next week, and until then, well, I'll be on a virtual beach with some virtual babes, not giving a rip. Wow.